Good morning. It's September 21st. Just uh, out looking for moose to photograph. Brought the long lens in the backpack here. Uh, it's a, I've got a 100 to 600 millimeter Sigma lens. Hoping to get close to some moose. So it's just after. Actually, the sun hasn't risen yet. I was in the bush about 45 minutes before sunrise this morning. Just hiking back through the thick stuff here over to a, to a pond or clearing that I noted on the map. And this is the kind of spot I'm looking for. You can see behind me, got a moose trail going through here. There's some old and fresh tracks. This is a gut, um, it's like a little stream valley. It goes down into a little pond area. So it's a pretty prime uh, moose rutting area. I'm trying to find a clearing and see if I can find some uh, wallows and rubs on the trees. Probably down into the thicker stuff we'll find the alders all rubbed up. But uh, nothing yet. I've done a few calls, I haven't heard anything. But like I said, this is the kind of spot I'm looking for. And it's a bit of a thick area with some little clearings and a bedding, bedding a spot behind me. So I'm going to hike back up into the hills here, up into the maples where they're going to be uh, breeding and eating twigs. So the moose are just browsing through here on their way down to the pond. So like I said, I'm going to head up and see what I can find. Here we've got some older droppings. They're uh, not very fresh, got mushrooms coming up through them. You can see some depressions, but in the ground where the moose walk through, but nothing fresh. You can tell with all the leaves and debris on top of everything. But uh, there is some fresh tracks in here as well, and it's looking like a really good spot. You can see here just near those droppings that uh, moose were in here early could be even spring uh, browsing on these twigs so they're nothing fresh but just shows that the moose are using the area pretty much all the maples in here are browsed so I'm thinking this is going to be a good spot to come in the winter to look for for moose this is that little valley going down to that pond and this is all really heavily browsed all of this right right at head level Stunted, so it looks like probably winter because there's growth up above the browsing. But yeah, right down through this valley. I've actually never seen an area so heavily browsed. It's all clipped off at at head level for for a moose. As far as you can see, all through this area, definitely a winter spot. So I'm gonna. I mean a winter camp in this area, see if I can get some winter shots. Yeah, look at all of this browse off. Oh! Oh! Here we have a moose bed in the middle of this little open meadow. And of course all the maples are browsed all around here, so living in here, I don't know when. The spring, winter for sure, but I'm assuming the spring as well. But I'm not seeing really much fresh sign now. This is what we were looking for. This isn't this is not a rub actually. But that's really fresh. That's still wet. Actually, we're feeding in here probably last night. Yeah, got fresh browse right here. That's actually moose eating the bark of this maple. It's not a not a bull rub, antler rub. So they're in here right now for sure. It's fresh tracks. It's a nice spot. Lots of shelter for them. Tons of maple browse, maple bark. It's easy for them to walk through. They're four foot long legs, not so easy for me to walk through. Or deer or any predators actually, so they have an advantage in this stuff. Let's see where they walk through the moss here. Here's a little bit fresher stuff. Not warm, so it's not from this morning, but it's it's still uh, not dried out. So you can tell that's fresher. This is such classic boreal forest moose habitat. It's 
kind of stuff they love to live in. Tons of maple and other uh, hardwood browse in here. Lots of cover, lots of place to lie down. Lots of openings to see each other. Surprise, I haven't seen anything or, or got anything respond to my calls yet. So this is actually a, a run, which is, which is what you call a trail that a game uses on a regular basis. So moose can go anywhere with their long legs, but there's some spots that they'll just continue to use. Other game will too. Bear and deer probably come through here. Wolf. And uh, it becomes a, a clear trail because they keep beating it down. So, like I said, moose don't usually need to use these, but bulls like to because their antlers are can go clear through. So, you, there you see some older moose droppings. Good sign, branches are all broken off for, from animals stepping over the down tree. Again, we're still on prime, prime habitat. Another prime run, and it's skirting around the edge of this LC up here. I think it's a pond according to the map. Maybe dried up, but it looks like it's got thick alders and stuff in there that the moose like to feed on. Here. Where are the moose? A lot of branches hit you in the eye when you're walking through the thick bush like this, especially at night or when it's dark out in the morning. So these protect my eyes. I always wear sunglasses of some kind in the woods now. I've had too many branches in the eyes over the years and it's not worth risking. So these aren't cheap, but I've had them a long time and these lenses are easily interchangeable. So I've got two or three. Uh, extra pairs of lenses, uh, darker ones, and they're all polarized so I can see into the water when I'm canoeing or fishing. But these are great in the woods. Uh, the yellow um, actually makes everything a little bit clearer, more vibrant, more separation. So if you were hunting, for example, with an, especially uh, bow hunting through this kind of stuff, it actually allows you to pick up the branches, and see the branches a little bit better. So that's what I'm wearing. But why I stopped here, I just wanted to show what uh, typical moose habitat look like again. Got an alder swamp here behind me. Yeah, that's classic. That's where I've shot my moose in spots like that. Okay, I thought I might find a wallow here on this trail. Looks like the, it's kind of an intersecting trail, so there's a trail up there. It's the one I was following, but look how major that is. So what I expected was wallow and some tree rubs, and here that's kind of a wallow, but then he gets into the low spot here and really tore that up. You can see through and stuff all over the place. So what they'll do is urinate in that roll around in it, get all covered in musk, musky urine, and then uh, try to attract the, attract the cow. So the cow will visit these uh, wallows and uh, follow the scent to, to find the bull. It's contrary to what me, most people think. The uh, cows typically actually go to the bulls, similar to turkeys, which is more natural as well. So when we're trying to call them in or a hunter's trying to call in the bull with a cow call, uh, they're very cautious because they don't typically do that. They, they'll come part of the way and then typically the cow would would uh, join the bull or meet them halfway or come all the way. I just want to get, show you the perspective here. Show you the size of the wallow. So it's pretty deep actually. And uh, I don't think it's a big bull, so it's not a very big track. And they, you know, the cows tracks probably in there too but I don't see a great big bull track so probably a yearling bull or maybe a two-year-old bull so that would be a, a great spot to sit and call anywhere in this area which I was just down over there on the other side that bull that I called in this morning probably came from here it's a major uh, trail so now that there's a rut pit or a, a wallow here the 
other moose, other bulls will be visiting as well. Uh, trying to find, they're trying to intercept the cows that come to it. So it's a marsh in the center here. They're probably bedded out in the center of that right now, some of them. And uh, we're up in these hardwood hills behind us. So it's like 10 o'clock now. I'm not likely to see anything unless I jump it as I'm circling. But I'm just going to circle that pond and check it out. So that's the wallow in the background. And here's a, a tree that was uh, snapped off last year. Last year or the year before. By a moose, uh, typically. Typically do that in the fall. Bend that over as he's thrashing. Rubbing his antlers and leaving scent and getting out aggression. Here we've got a couple of fresh rubs on the same, or this year, not not today by any means, but certainly they've only, it's, it's uh, September 21st, they've only lost their velvet in the last week or two. But uh, let's see where he's really beat this tree up. And broke that one right off. So actually that's all very fresh green still, so. Yeah, this week sometimes for sure. Sometime for sure. <laughs> really testing the ground through here. Urinating everywhere. That's what we were looking for earlier. That's smoking fresh. And it's cold, so but it was it was uh overnight, it was eight degrees this morning. Overnight, so it would uh, cool off quickly, but uh, that's green and fresh. It's not dried out at all. Just stopped here because the smell of moose urine is so strong. That I'm wondering if he's standing here somewhere nearby. It's all right here. It's not wet on the plant still, but the ground is saturated with urine. Very distinct smell. If you smell that's what the bulls smell like. Oh, there's a wallow. That's why. Very fresh. Well, that wallow's not fresh, but this is his spot. Holy smokes, that ever strong. You're walking around a pond or a bog like this one. Most of the time, I found you get these uh, bulls on the higher ground, so they're kind of rising in elevation here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but very thick, especially as you get close to the edge of that uh, bog or pond. And uh, if you're a moose and you get on this downwind side of the pond, so in this case, with the funnels here in the higher ground, southeast corner of the pond will be the lower or downwind side, and you get these um, little high grounds. Anyway, if you get up on those, you can smell all around if you're a moose or an animal. What better smell than we have? And uh, something comes along that spooks you. If you can smell everything, moose could smell everything coming from the opening. And uh, can bolt into that if you smell something or uh, see something coming from the other way. Deer will do the opposite a lot of times. They'll keep a clearing to their downwind side or, or open hardwoods or open forests more likely where they can uh, keep an eye on it. They'll face that way and then the wind's hitting them in the back of the head so they can smell everything upwind. So that way they've got pretty much a 360 degree. 360 degree uh, line of defense. Looks like we had a windstorm come through here, blow trees down in a linear line. I think I might have just heard a moose up here. Let's go check it out. Here's a good example of a moose bed I was talking about. Big uh, spot right here in the ferns. It went out that way or uh, had a calf but bedded there with it but uh, and there's another bed there so great spot for a moose to bed because this uh, these ferns are so high that you could be lying down in here and nothing would know it's here you know, 
certainly people would walk right past it and not know it's here. So this is very typical of a bedding spot for moose and for deer actually in these tall ferns, especially when they go brown and they kind of blend in. On the other side of that pond now and got this older, uh, older rut wallow. Must have been right well, like a couple of weeks ago by the looks of it, nothing fresh in there. All well, the roots are ripped up, so it's definitely a moose tearing, of, tearing at this. But yeah, it was before the last rain. Actually, I can smell the urine too. But, uh, so they're just circling this pond, which is a fantastic spot to set up for pictures. Thick as hell though, getting back here is a bit of a challenge. Now here's a wallow with a big track, so this is likely a, the abode of a big bull. Scraping up the ground all through, all through here. 